What I thought we would do is, um, since it's only seven verses, that we would actually read uh, what Jesus said to the, to the church at Ephesus, and then we'll talk a little bit about the city and that kind of thing. <clears throat> Certainly verse 1, to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil, and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them to be liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. We stop right there. We'd say that's a really, really good church. And, and I think it was overall. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But then he says, um, nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. We're going to spend a good bit of time on what that means the last maybe 10 or, 10 or 12 minutes of the class. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do your first works, do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. But this you, this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Uh, Ephesus. Hopefully you've gotten back this week and you've uh, read the book of Ephesus, uh, Ephesus, Ephesians, that you've gone to um, um, the end of Acts 18, uh, read all of Acts 19, and read all of Acts 20, because Ephesus is involved in all of those uh, chapters. And <clears throat> the book of Ephesians was written somewhere, I wouldn't quibble, maybe 60 AD, I've heard 62, heard 58, I, 60 is good for our, for our discussion. And uh, about how many years has it been roughly since that book was written to, to this time? Uh, not today, to when, when the, uh, John is writing, Let's be more specific. About 35 years. So there's been a generation come, maybe a generation and a four, you know, the next one coming up uh, with those years. And if I were to say, um, the church has no grandchildren, put your thinking cap on there a little bit. In the context of, of the church at Ephesus, I think by the time we get through the class, you, you, you'll see what I mean. Well, what do you think that means? The church has no grandchildren. Got a new, gen got a new generation coming. 35 years later, go ahead, Gary. Um, it's in the process. Uh, you're, you're, getting, you're getting warm. The church has no grandchildren. Lance? Well, it appears they maybe had started doing some of that. They were still holding, holding pretty fast. But, um, you know, a generation stands up, like in the, maybe the 50s, 60s, early 70s, against, against all the issues that, had, that came along. And, uh, and, and the churches are fairly strong. And 35 years later, you've got the folks coming up who didn't fight those battles. And they inherit, if you will, inherit um, a church that uh, they've not gone through the battles. And sometimes they ride on the coattails or the laurels of their ancestors. And it could be, could be, that the church at Ephesus uh, was sliding. In fact, I, I think, Gary, you're, you're right. They, they were sliding. We'll have to look at some of that here in a little bit. Uh, and we'll get to maybe possibly some of the, motiv the motivations of what they were doing and maybe what, had been, what was going on there. Um, Ephesus was a free city. Anybody do any research on a free city? Under the Roman Empire, they were under a lot of pressure uh, to conform. Um, Domitian is in power now, the last year or two of his power. 
He has said that he is God, Caesar is God, and you had to do that in order to keep your union card and a lot of other things. Um, the Romans gave the right to these um, portions of their, of their empire to, to be self-governing as long as you behave. And uh, Ephesus was one of those cities. It was the capital of um, the eastern, or is it western? I forgot now. The, I think the eastern portion of, 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 no, western Asia. It was the capital of western Asia. That's right, west is this way. Um, the capital of all of Asia Minor was Pergamum, or Pergamus. How you like to say that, which we'll get to them before too long. Um, but it was a very, very commercially important city. It was on the trade routes. It was on the sea routes from Rome. Uh, you came through Ephesus uh, if you were going to do, be doing trading uh, east of Ephesus. Um, some call it, the citizens like to call it the metropolis of, of Asia. Um, it's had one of the seven wonders of the world at that time. Anybody take a shot at that? Temple of Diana, Temple of Artemis, if you will. Where did we read about that? Acts chapter 19? Uh, there was a disturbance, a major disturbance over, over um, the tradesmen who were worried about their livelihood. Uh, so that's in Acts 19. So um, in Acts, roughly, Acts 16, almost through the through the end of almost Acts 18 would, would be the second missionary journey. Paul was, wanted to go there, and he, he, he didn't go. So at the beginning of his third missionary journey, which was somewhere around 57, maybe 58 A.D., he journeyed to Ephesus. Who did he take with him? Just curious if you read that. Man and wife. Aquila and Priscilla. That, that's exactly right. Uh, took them with them. And at least what's recorded, he spent more time at Ephesus than, than any other church. That's recorded. About three years he was at Ephesus. And it says that, that the, the, the word went all over Asia Minor when Paul and, and uh, Timothy and Silas and Aquila and Priscilla and all those were in that area. So that explains all these other churches that the Lord's going to be talking about here in the rest of rest of that. In Acts 20, what, what did Paul warn the Ephesian elders, the church we're talking about, might happen? Grievous wolves are going to enter into the flock, not sparing the flock. Well, they're sheep. Just fight back. Well, sheep don't fight. So he said, you as shepherds, you have to watch that flock because and, and it, to make it even worse, uh, what else did he warn the Ephesian elders about? Yeah, it's actually going to, some of it's going to come from you. Um, so it didn't take many years for that to happen. Now, in the book of, uh, of Ephesians, um, I just wrote down a couple of things here. This is about 30, 32, 33 years later. Uh, Paul said to walk in chapter 4, in unity. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, you know, all the ones. Be unified. And in chapter 5, he says, walk in wisdom. Walk in light, chapter 4. And walk in love, chapter 4. What's the missing ingredient so far, just from what we read here in the first seven verses? What has happened to them? They're going through the motions and doing a lot of good stuff, it sounds like. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But they had lost their first love, which was kind of, I thought, kind of interesting. Paul also warned Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy 1 in verse 3. He said, see that they teach, no I'm going to leave you here, Timothy. I'm going to leave now, but you stay here. And you, you teach them to uh, have no other doctrine, not to not heed genealogies and fables and that kind of thing, and teach them to love from a pure heart. That was just a few years later, maybe 63, 64. So 
We're getting now close to that 30 year reign where something's going on during that 30 years. And, and the Lord, now how's the Lord know all that? He said, I'm walking right in there with you. I'm walking in the midst of the candlesticks. Now, wh what is a candlestick again in this context? The church. Is the, does a candlestick shine the light? Well, yes, yeah, sort of. Is the candlestick the light? That's a better question. It supports the light. What's the light? Jesus, the gospel. So they were, they, I'm walking among the candlesticks. I'm walking among what should be supporting the light. You know, if you walk in the light as he is in the light, all of that. So Jesus says, I know all of this. And if something's in your, you ever heard, well, we're, the right hand, there's something uh, I think symbolic about uh, Jesus said, I have you, I said, how about me word it here right? He who holds the seven stars in his right hand. You're under his control. He knows exactly what's going on. I've got you in the palm of my hand. Have you heard that one before? Well, you know that they're eating out of the palm of my hand. Well, Jesus, he has them right here. He says, I walk among the candlesticks. I walk among the churches. He still do that? He certainly does. He certainly does. Does he know what goes on in this church? He sure does. At Valley, he sure does. And everywhere else. Uh, we, are the, we are the lampstands that support the light, that send the light, and he knows, he knows all about us. He says, I know your works. I know your works. I know your labor. I know your patience. And so on. Um, <clears throat> but you lost your first love. You left your first love, and he says you must repent of that. Give me some, some possibilities of what losing, what did they do to lose that first love? And he said if you don't repent, you're going to lose your candlestick. This is not serious business. What, what do you think happened? I think that's part of it with the doctrine of the Nicolaitans and the doctrine of Balaam. Um, some say that's symbolic of the, of the Libertine party. Libertines, you can look that up. Um, the Libertines believe that there were no sexual, there, there were no uh, sexual mores, there, there were no morals, there were, everything was physical, and they were, they were having an effect in that church there. So, that could be part of it, yes, false, false teaching, plus all the other things that he told Timothy in 1 Timothy 1. Yes, Lance, then Don. So, so I, I apply this to old law where it talks about those that love God will keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about what is the second law to that, to love one another, love your neighbor, right? And Jesus pulls that in with the church by saying, this is how my people will be known. Uh, I think that's, that's perfect. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians 13, the first three verses here in just a little bit. But you're, you're exactly right. Can you, can you go through uh, worship services mechanically? Okay, uh, help me out. Mechanical, mechanically. That's like the prayer wheels. They spin when they go up the mountain, right? Could be that. Yeah, yeah. You had the, the uh, scriptures written on their phylacteries, and, and they had all of these things with all the scriptures and so on, and, and you know, counting, counting beads and doing all these kinds of things. It's mechanical. Lord, I don't want mechanical. You've lost your first love. It's, it, it could be mechanical. What about routine? How can, how can worship, how can uh, coming together as a church become routine? I think that was going on, Ryan. Okay, going through the motion, checking the boxes. We're good about checking boxes. 
become blind maybe to what see okay I, I think that's a good one uh, uh, Don Hierapolis as well. Yeah, Hierapolis as well. Yep, yep. What happened after that? There is a zeal, there is a love for spread of the gospel, and a love for people that kind of rolled over and died about the time of the big earthquake. Okay. That didn't, that, 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 that just kind of stopped. No, I, I, think, I think that's good. Uh, all these are really good. Turn to 1 Corinthians 13. We had a class on this uh, a couple year or two ago, whatever it was now, I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians, we're going to read the first three verses. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could uh, remove mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. And then, of course, then it goes on. Love suffers long. Love is all of that. Um, that's pretty clear, is it not? That, and how did Jesus say that we must worship him in spirit and in truth? Now, which one's more important? <laughs> that's right. We get the truth down sometimes, or a lot of the time, most of the time, Lord willing, but we don't, sometimes we don't have the right, the right spirit about things. Uh, maybe you've lost the first love. Maybe it's becoming mechanical. Uh, all these things, I think, applied to Ephesus, and the Lord said, well, that's okay. You know, it's close enough. You're in the top ten. No? <laughs> yeah. What did he say? You must, he said it twice, actually, must repent. What, what does what does repent mean? Cha I heard change. I heard turning. Those are good. Those are good. Anything else? When I think of repentance, I think of the phrase bearing fruit of repentance. Yes, I think that's good. Is there a difference between the last between being sorry and being repentant? Yeah, I think. Yeah. That's right. I think that's it. Uh, bear fruits of repentance. Yeah. Um, you know, you show that you're, that you're repentant. I think that's, re that's really good. Now, um, <clears throat> what if they didn't do that? Going to remove the candlestick. What does that metaphorically mean? You're not with God. Can, can God remove a, a church's candlestick and the church not know it? Sure can. Yes, it can. Yes, he can. When? Oh, I don't know. We don't know that. Solomon's dead. Um, we, we don't know, but he can and he does. And he said, unless you repent, I'll remove my approval of that church at Ephesus, even with all of these wonderful things that they were doing. I wrote down some steps. Oh, by the way, before I forget, um, we went through the seven churches of Asia class, maybe over in the big classroom a whole semester. Um, and so I have a whole lot more detail. I have time for this class. But if you would like a copy of... Um, of the seven churches of Asia, that, that, that big class we went through. I don't have any, but I, I can make them. I can print them off and get, get them to you. Just let me know or let one of us know, and we, we'll, we'll, we'll do a list. But it's good for your library, uh, I think at least. Now, put your thinking caps on here a little bit. Repentance. And also, in the, on the, the other side of this ledger, if you will, put the parable of the prodigal son. So I want to put the parable of the prodigal son here, and then I want to put 
the three steps of repentance over here. The first one that, that I have is reflection. Reflection. Reflection in the context of the parables uh, of, the, of, the, of the prodigal son, if it was. Uh, what, where did that come into play with, with, the, with, the product, with the son? He left, he spent all of his father's money, he spent his inheritance on, on loose living and all of that, and he became broke. How did he reflect? How did he get from where he was to being a repentant son? First step is reflection. Uh, give me, how did he reflect? What, what did he do? He, Yeah, eating hog food will kind of, when you reach, sometimes you got to reach bottom, do you not? Um, not always, not always, but sometimes you, you, if it's an alcohol problem or whatever the problem might be, sometimes you have to reach bottom and wake up in places you, you, you didn't need to be, and you start reflecting. The prodigal said, you know, remember the, what the word was? He said, he came to himself. Have you ever been where you came to yourself and going, ooh, man, what am I doing? Yes, came to himself. And he said, how uh, many hired servants of my father's have more to eat and clothing and all of that. He reflected. He didn't repent yet, repent yet but he reflected. Then he became uh, what I have at least entitled resolution, root word resolute. He reflected. And he makes a resolution. We do that a lot, a lot of times at, at New Year's. How long does it last? About 10 days. <laughs> a lot of times. But reflect and make a resolution. He says, I will arise and go to my father and say, Father, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But he made that resolution. Now, ha has he done anything yet? He reflected, he resolved, and then obviously uh, the, the, the third one would be action. He took action, which kind of ties into what Lance said, that uh, fruits of repentance, what does that imply? Action, for sure, for sure. Reflect, resolve, resolve. and act. Yeah, and he, he arose and he went to his father. And, and, and he was sorry. He wasn't sorry he got caught. He wasn't sorry he was out of money. Sometimes we're sorry because we got caught. Um, he repented. He said, Father, I, I'm not worthy. Just bring me back as a servant. So I think that's what the Lord's looking for here from the brethren at, at Ephesus. It's time as a church to reflect, resolve, and act, but also as individuals. He said, I know your works, too, as individuals. Because remember, what church had, where it had a lot of bad things said about this church. In fact, he said, I'm about ready to, to pull all of the lamp stamps or, or my, my approval, but there's a few of you who have, who have not, who will walk with me uh, in white. Where was that? PTS, post-traumatic stress, the S. Sardis, at Sardis. So you can be in a church that's got a lot of problems, but you can still be you, and you can still do what's right. For how long, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but there were still a few said, you'll walk with me in white, the few in Sardis that, that haven't yielded to all this nonsense. Okay? Questions, comments on that? True or false? Form is of no value unless the motive is proper. Form is of no value unless the motive is proper. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. Um, the Lord don't, not only looks at what we do, but why we do it. Hebrews 4. The difference, and if you can, anybody can describe the difference between soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and the thought and intent of a heart, you let me know. It's harder. He can. 
He can. Now, give me some, give me some, I, I got a couple of them here, and I'm going to hear what you got to say, but first, but I'll throw these out and then we can talk about them. The Lord looks at not only what we do, but why we do it. What our motivation is. Anybody got a couple of, a couple of things or a thing that we could talk about for a second? I've got, I've got a couple here. Uh, in, in, the, in the worship service, can we go through the form of something without motives being right? And that we've all said that we could. You want to give me one? The Lord's Supper. Absolutely the Lord's Supper. Now, what's the danger of that? Oh, you take the bread, you drink the juice, and let's go. Come on, i got to get to, to the restaurant here. Is that what he wants? He says, you eat and drink what to your soul if you're not thinking what, ought, what you ought to be thinking about. You're going through the correct procedure. Got no problem with that. But you've got to have the right motive. The Lord's Supper is a good one. That's a good one. Can you think of another one? Singing. Help me out, Greg. What about those of us that can't sing very well? There's two sides. There's that. Then there's those who can sing. There's that. Those who can sing well and they want to hear themselves sing well. Okay. Ooh, that's a good one. I hadn't thought about that aspect of it. Yes. Yeah, uh, and, and I know this, some of this is being, are being recorded and with masks it's hard, but I'm going to repeat, if I can, what Greg and, and, and uh, Ryan said, that got two aspects to it. One, those who of us who can't sing very well, but try. Lord says, you got to try. Then there's some who sing extremely well, but what is their motive for that? Is it pure? Wonderful. You're singing praises to God in, in either case. But if you got the wrong motive, then that's a problem. I didn't have that one down, but I like that one. Singing. Don? The, the song Hallelujah, the way that is written and the way it is sung, it does not reflect what the psalmist did with his songs, which uh, begin to praise the Lord. Hallelujah is praise the Lord. And is that to be shouted from the mountaintop or sung the way we do it? Is, is, that bothers it me. Yeah, is it wrong to tell a lie? Is it wrong to sing a lie? Sure is. It sure is. Oh, how I love Jesus, do you? And any song is like that. So the Lord says, I know all of that. I know where you're coming from. I appreciate what you're doing here, but you better have your motive right. What about giving? Could that be given, giving for the wrong reasons? How? <laughs> okay, uh, Don said uh, for the video, <laughs> A tax write-off. Well, there's no, is there anything wrong with having a tax write-off? No. no, there's not. Is that your motive? Is that your, no, that, is, is that your motivation? The Lord said, give as you've prospered. What if you don't do that? You make a good bit of money, but you don't give very well. Lord knows that. You're going through the act. Sometimes we, we eat, I, I'm sure I've said it too, it doesn't matter the amount you give. Actually, it does. It does. He said, you give as you've been prospered. And I suspect every single one of us in here have been prospered. He says to give cheerfully. Well, I'm going to give. <laughs> Pass that thing down here. May as well kept it. Give cheerfully. Not grudgingly. You should feel it. You should feel it when you give. 
Well, I could be driving another brand new car with the money I'm given. Okay, your point is what? Yes, that's probably true. Actions and your motivation. We saw that in 1 Corinthians 13. Lord said, I don't care if you burn your body for me, but if you don't love your brother, you got, you got crispy. And I think some of that was going on here because the Lord said you left your first love. Now, let me ask this question. <clears throat> With the time we got, <clears throat> pardon me, left. Of all these problems, uh, I'll, I'll, let me back up one step. Between motive and action, you know, the Lord said spirit and truth. They got to be, it, you know, it's, it's connected by the coordinating junction, conjunction and which gives equal weight to each thing that's on side of that conjunction. Which one's more important? As somebody said earlier, yes. They're both important. Now, which problem might be more typical of a new convert? The spirit part or the, or the truth part? Okay, go ahead, Bronco. I think you're right. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember how I worded the question now, but. <clears throat> okay. Which side? They would have more spirit. Okay. That, that's where I was going, and I, and I worded that poorly. You bailed me out. <laughs> um, a new convert is excited about air. They're excited about all these little things. They're so happy to be forgiven. Now, do they ha have all this down yet? No, they don't. You know what? The Lord's okay with that. They can't stay there. Can't, you know, you got to move. Now, this church has been existent for uh, Ephesus 35, 37, maybe up to 40 years, somewhere in there. What did their problems seem to be? The truth? or their fervor, the spirit. It's almost rhetorical, really, after all of our conversation this evening. <clears throat> they had lost, it became kind of old hat. Can that happen to you, and that, can that happen to me, and can that happen to the church, any church, any of the Lord's church? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. How do we guard that, guard from doing that? Is it easy? No, it's not easy. It's not easy. Well, you know, we've always done it that way. Maybe you've always done it wrong. Um, how can we guard that, guard against that? Hey, there's no easy answer. I wish to, I, I don't have any here. I've got some in my mind, Lance. Is there something wrong with that? <laughs> you got to take care of yourself. You do it every meal. You do it every day. Take care of yourself. It's a continual, ongoing process. And if that's how we are supposed to be spiritually. They, no, that, that's a good point. <clears throat> they lost their first love. Does that happen overnight? It doesn't. You know, the old frog in a boiling pot just turned the temperature up, and the next thing you know, you're burned up, and you didn't even know what happened. Jesus said, you know me, you'll know my disciples by how, by how they love one another. There's the issue. And, and the master said that right here. You've lost your love for me, and I suspect you lost your love for one another. And he said, you better change, or, or uh, I'll remove you, Austin. I think the first Sunday that we all came back from April, and we sat down for a month, and I think that's because I had to, there was something in the air that first came back, just that month that we were out. It was a wake-up call or whatever. I, we really missed it. And I think that hopefully we capture that feeling and bottle up and don't. 
Yeah. Well, I think that's a really good point. And here, here again for the video, uh, the comment was made you know, with this COVID. You know, who knows if this is some kind of test? Is Satan behind it? Probably. But is it a test to see what we're made of? Possibly. Um, but, you know, we were sitting at home like the rest of you, and we were about to climb the wall. You know, when you've been a Christian for so long, that not meeting with your brothers and sisters is uh, it's just pure torture. We wouldn't even go outside. I didn't want my neighbors to see me on a Sunday morning. Because they, they, you know, they make fun. You know, y'all going to church. I know you're going to church again on Wednesday night. Okay, that's good. And they know at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, we're at church, at the church building. We wouldn't go out. I was afraid they'd see us. Because inside it says you, you're supposed to be at the church building. Why are you not there? And worshiping, we did the best we could, didn't we? I, we did the best we could online. But eventually, the Lord knew what he was doing. He said, you've got to come together. You've got to come together. In fact, I command you to come together on every first day of the week. Because I'll tell you, it's not a, you can't go to heaven on your own, sitting at home with your pajamas on for very long. Can't do it. We're meant to come together and to encourage one another and to worship God and try to show as much love as we can. And sometimes that's not easy. Questions, comments? Very good comments you guys had tonight. Uh, Greg and then Ryan. Yep. In some ways, it's easier for them to get back than if they had been taken off into error, with erroneous teaching. Because they have been at the place they need to go back to. They've been there. Sometimes you get caught up in error. You've never been in the truth, and it's harder to find the truth. But to actually find that spirit should be easier to come back. And that's what Jesus called us to do. Remember right. who you were and do those works again. And you'll be back to the same. And, and, and so, it, to me, that's a call for us. Uh, it is a call for us. It's easy for us to read our Bible and we try to apply the right. to the right spirit. But are we really trying to apply it to the right spirit? Yeah. That's true. Uh, this is just a good history lesson unless you make application. And as an old preacher said one time, a lesson without application just showing off. you got to apply it. Uh, Ryan, then we'll stop. I got a yeah, real quick, I was just thinking of Romans Paul too. We are truly renewing our mind every day for those who pray for us. Right? When uh, Lance was saying that earlier, it's a constant battle, constant seeing things as the first time battle. Yeah, no, that, that that's a good verse. And appreciate your participation. Um uh, it's uh, as you get a little bit more hard hearing it with masks, it's, uh, but I think I got the most of, of what you all were saying, and, I, and it was really, really good. Thank you. Um, you know, I, we could spend four or five classes on Revelation. We won't. I'll review a little bit Sunday, and then we'll go on to Smyrna. We'll try to try our best to stay on schedule. Thank you. <laughs>